uh, meet somebody with such a adventurous, brave, uh, moral and generous life. Guys, guys, you are raising the expectations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just very <laughs> <getting ready. laughs> sorry. Uh, one of the outcome, one of the goals actually of the Israeli policy is to make us the as you can imagine. And part of the Freedom Theatre work is to try to implement some ideological aspects of why we have to stay in Geneva and struggle and not just uh, run away because it's a hard life. But it works. 50% of the population of Bethlehem left because they have money. 50% of the camp left without money. 78% of the children of Jenin want to go to Europe. 78%. So this is just uh, to show you how successful is the Israeli transfer policy uh, is. They didn't like us because uh, we uh, did the dirty laundry on the stages in Germany. We spoke about the oppression of women. Batur said that she has two struggles. First to fight as a Palestinian against the Israeli occupation and second struggle as a woman in her own society. They didn't like the other part. They say, don't talk about the suffering of women, talk about the war, talk about apartheid, talk about checkpoints. But she said, in, in, in my neighborhood, uh, it's not the war. It's my father and my brother. It's my uncle. It's the way I dress, it's the way I talk, it's the way I walk, it's the way I sit. It's my life, it's my future. And they didn't like it. They didn't like the fact that uh, we mentioned the term civil war. There is a civil war in Palestine, not only between Hamas and Fatah. It's not yet uh, burning in the West Bank because the Israeli, Israeli army is still holding it, but it's going to come soon. So, and you know, community in exile are always more conservative than if they were, were living in their own uh, countries, they become, you know, communities in exile are more Christian than the pop, we say. We do the same. Because they are attacked, they always been blamed, you beat your woman, you kill your woman, you know, and suddenly they come to see Palestinian play who deals with women issues. They were expecting to, to uh, see what we Palestinians been showing the world for 60 years, how victimized we are and how much suffering we have and how poor we are and we in the Freedom Theater want to change this image. We are not poor, we are not the ultimate victims, we do mistakes, we are human, we fight, we are proud and this is who we are and it's not the image that this community is looking for. Um, if you were invited now by a really sympathetic, uh, uh, how do you say, credible uh, theater company in, in, in Tel Aviv, let's say, what would you say? I would say that I signed the boycott letter issued by the Palestinian <coughs> artist calling for BDS, for boycott, divestment and sanction against the Israeli occupation, which I believe is the only way you in Europe can really join us in non-violent resistance against this vicious apartheid and I will not go on Israeli stage unless the last brick of the wall will be down. Now suddenly, now suddenly they start clapping. <laughs> and, um, and right there, because uh, Giuliano, uh, Giuliano uh, I want to thank you. For, for telling us this story, and I understand much better than two, two hours ago what you mean exactly by art as resistance to all kinds of oppression, social, political, mental. And personally, I, I deeply appreciated the way, I've seldom seen it, in which you jump from we to we. Yeah. You've used we in different, meaning different communities and all in all, and I think it was a very open kind of we that you use. I think it's a nice ending. Uh, the we think, when I'm talking about the 
Palestinians, I say we. When I talk about Jews, Israelis, I say also we. Both nations, both identities, both religions are inside me and I don't want one of them to overcome the other. I believe that at the end, we Jews and Arabs will live together.